Well, welcome to uh, Street Life Ministries uh, podcast, and I am uh, honored to have Batman as my guest, and uh, this is going to be an amazing podcast and interview this time. Uh, everyone seems to get a little bit better each time. Uh, one of our marketing guys, uh, Tommy Beal, uh, started interacting with Batman from San Jose about a month or two ago, and we asked if he would come up and be a part of Street Life Ministries in Redwood City to come help uh, hand out some toiletry kits and do a podcast with us. So we are so blessed to have you here this morning, and uh, thank you for joining us with this podcast. Yeah, it's great to be here. That's so awesome. So we talked a little bit uh, in the beginning when we first started this uh, our conversation, getting to know each other. So. Uh, what? How did it all start? Just if you don't mind sharing that one story you were talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, like uh, I started uh, my uh, junior year of high school, and uh, one of the last few days of that year, I was coming home uh, from school, just in my car. I saw this uh, woman uh, who was pulled over. Uh, she had the hood of her car off. Um, I had jumper cables in the back of my car, so I figured I might as well see if I could help out. Um, I pulled over, um, I, we tried to jump our car, but, uh, it wasn't working because the battery in my car is not the best, um, but she, uh, she told me that she was living out of her car at the time, her window was stuck rolled down, and, uh, her car battery was dead, and she was trying to go visit her son, um, and, uh, she was just kind of stuck there, and, uh, I couldn't jump her car, but she was right next to an auto repair shop, so I went and knocked on the front door and I asked, hey, uh, can I, uh, can you guys help her out? And uh, they were, the people inside the shop were not very receptive or helpful. Uh, They told me that they would not help her specifically because of her situation of living out of her car. So um, that uh, really got to me. Because it's like, she just needs help. Like, they have the jumper cables in the shop. Like, I've seen them before because I've had to use them myself. Um, Like, they should just be willing to help her. But they instead decided not to. So, uh, after I went back and I told her what they said, we talked for a little bit. So then I decided, okay, I'll just go bug them every, like hour or so until uh, they finally, you know, roll over and help out. So uh, around like, it was like three o'clock when I met her. Uh, So around like seven o'clock, they were very insistent on not helping out. So uh, around seven o'clock, I finally got the guy to help out since he was just coming off of his shift. And uh, so he came out, literally did in like three seconds and then went back. But it meant the world to her. And um, she was so very, very grateful for that, even though like it was literally no problem. Like it was no struggle whatsoever to do it. But like, it just really got to me the fact that, you know, we as a, like a society just kind of, you know, stigmatize and ostracize uh, people who are on the street or not living in a house and it's very 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 just cruel and strange so I kind of figured um, I start doing something about it so um, I used to do a lot more like making costumes and stuff like that for comic cons and stuff so uh, I put together uh, a couple pieces of what I was working on and then I decided to use this to, you know, attract attention to the issue and kind of force people to look at issues that they don't like to see. Because nobody wants to see people suffering. I understand that, but my whole thing is that, like, if we, you know, ignore problems, nothing gets solved. They just get worse. So we have to look at the things that we don't want to see and look at the people who are suffering in these issues and help them. Because, you know... We can help. Anybody can help. It's not difficult. Yeah, that's really, really cool. I, I, that is an awesome story. I love that. I, and I really love the costume. I, I love the the um, kind of like the take the attention off of you, the person, and just kind of putting it onto the costume itself so people are driven towards that. Um, so that kind of comes to, to another question. So what... What, what, what is the costume? I know we, we talked about some of the beginning stages of what it's made out of. What, what is the costume made out of, like, so far? 
Um, I built it off a set of motocross armor. Uh, there's like a pretty thick um, stab resistant like HIPS plastic um, up here. And then I have like polycarbonate plating inside with just some foam backing. And that's not because I'm worried about uh, anybody who's unhoused, um, you know, coming after me. It's more uh, just sometimes like uh, there's some just uh, not so friendly people around encampments that aren't unhoused, but they just come around and are not very friendly. So I like to make sure that I'm a little bit protected. And then also like, I just do it for fun because I like to make sure that I'm an industrial design major, so I like to build things. Um, That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> I really like that. So as you were telling uh, my uh, marketing guy, uh, Tommy, so you go out like at all hours of the day and night, right? Yeah. Um, I Weather and like time of day doesn't really stop me because um, um, and that's not because I'm super hardcore or anything like that. It's just because like I'm, you know, I recognize that there's a need for it. So when I have time, I do what I can. Um, and sometimes that's at like two o'clock in the afternoon. Sometimes that's a little bit later at night. Um, so, so I kind of like it. So Batman being a, a billionaire businessman and then a superhero when he's called, you're, you're a, a college student called to be <laughs> a superhero to help serve the homeless in, in the homeless community. And you said, um, so right now you're, you're doing the, normally the downtown area of San Jose. Mm -hmm. Have you, have you cruised out to any, er, any other areas in San Jose or are you just focusing on downtown right now? Uh, my main focus is downtown, but I also focus on like a Monterey road. Uh, a little bit as well. I try to get down there if I can. Uh, I also um, do like when I work with uh, other like uh, nonprofits or different organizations. I uh, I'll go and like I'll like make contact with people um, to start, and then uh, I'll like hand that community off to a different organization so that they're taken care of. Yeah. Um, so what would you say like with with the Batman co costume and, and I? personally would think that most guys, I'm 50, and I would think that when they see the Batman costume, it kind of brings out the inner child. Because for me, I see it and I'm thinking, hey, I remember, I grew up watching Batman, the cartoon and, the, and then the movies and stuff, and I had all the action figures. So for me, it brings out like an inner child. Mm -hmm. um, when you're out serving the homeless community, do you feel like it kind of breaks a barrier? Like, like um, just the approach like when you meet people do you feel like it kind of helps like kind of like take off the defense mechanism with some folks uh, very much so it's actually one of the main reasons why I continued using it after like the other than just the initial shock value of getting people to focus on it and I know it is very much shock value it's a pretty underhanded strategy on my, on my part, but it works. Yeah. It's important. No, it's, it's so awesome. I, I, I know. I, I love everything about it. I, I really am fascinated by by what you're doing. I think it's awesome. We, we've we been serving the homeless here in, in Redwood City and Menlo Park for 20 years. And um, and so seeing what you're doing and, and at your age doing this, and I just think I'm, I'm very, um, I have a lot of respect for you and I'm very fascinated by by this whole, whole uh, collaboration and what you're doing in San Jose. Um, what would you say, have you have you f been able to physically with, with what you're doing, um, uh, have any, see any lives like dramatically change um, in the last two years that you've been doing this or, or just any like stories that you might have of, of life-changing events? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, I'll talk about that a little bit. I did want to finish the last question up. Uh, yeah, I do, um, the last question was the, um, like the edge behind it. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, it very much does uh, allow me to um, communicate. It gives me conversation starters that uh, I wouldn't have otherwise because, uh, and like people will reach out to me rather than me having to reach out to them, which uh, um, it, it's kind of both ways. It can either go both ways. I just say, hey, how's it going? Or um, they'll ask me like, where's the Batmobile? Why, why are you walking? <laughs> and uh, it's um, very much, it's a great strategy for just starting conversation and then uh, I like to keep conversation that's like what one of my other main focuses is like treating people like people so instead of just like you know handing food out and then running uh, I like to I like to talk and make sure that people are doing okay mentally as well um, well I'm not trained for that um, I have a little bit of a background with uh, um, you know in that sort of area so I like to try to use that whenever I can um, and yeah, to your next question, um, the 
seeing people's lives change. Um, it's been a bit of a rocky road um, with the pandemic and everything. Um, I've seen a lot of forwards and I've also seen a lot of backwards. Um, a lot more backwards than forwards, unfortunately. Because mm -hmm. um, I'm just <clears> that <throat> person. Like, I'm not doing anything super dramatic. Um, like, I can't physically pull people off of the street. I can't, you know, buy them a house or anything like that. I don't have those kind of resources as much as I wish I did. Um, but, like, I've seen people, you know, slowly start to build back up, um, which has been very good. Um, and just, like, even just mentally, like, with mental health-wise, uh, it's been very, very good to see people, you know, come back from, you know, such a dark, dark place. Mm -hmm. um, but also just like I've seen people regress down to some of the uh, the worst um, and it's not their fault I completely understand why they're why they reach because it just breaks people that much pressure mm -hmm. um, it really does and uh, it's been very very hard to see uh, people that you get to know and you talk to and you know you create relationships and friendships with slowly start to break down slowly mentally um, and you know it's very 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 um, hard to see that sure. and I feel that it would be it wouldn't that wouldn't happen so often if uh, you know there were more people helping um, just to have more resources available and just more people on the problem yeah so um I know you're going to go back off to college, and we had talked about that. And then uh, when you're on your breaks and during the summertime, you're going to be back uh, hitting the streets. Um, and I'm hoping not only and going to be praying for that, um, because I think what you're doing is amazing, and, and I believe in the power of prayer, uh, but also hope that this is going to build a, a collaboration, a relationship with you guys up here, with you up here and what we're doing as well, and hope that we can help support each other. Um, but any thoughts or any ideas on what your future vision is with what you're doing, or are you, are you just kind of going day by day? Or um, At the moment, I'm taking it pretty slow, uh, just because like, I don't want to overscale something and then have it fall apart and mean nothing. I like, I put two years of uh, work into this and I'm, I'm not gonna overstate my, my work. Like I, I don't do much. I'm more, much more of just a, a person who just helps out. Um, I'm not like changing lots of things, but uh, I just wanna take it very slow because I don't want uh, this sort of energy that I'm getting from like the media attention to kind of you know die out because like I, I screw up or I um, anything like that. I want to make very much sure that I take it very carefully and that you know I you know get people to um, help on their own rather than creating a new organization of my own because you know I'm of the opinion that like. Things won't change until people recognize people on the street as people. Um, people, like, nothing's going to change unless we are, unless everybody themselves choose actively to help in a much more active way than just, say, donating or, like, um, you know, just, like, supporting. And while those things are great, I also think that active support, um, like, boots on the ground kind of deal, is um, so, so, so important. And I can't force anybody to do that. I can't convince anybody to do that uh, as much as I would love to, and I try to. Um, so basically my main focus at the moment is just to slowly get people, you know, more comfortable with the idea that, like, we can help, so we should help um, kind of thing. Sure. So that's kind of my main focus is just, like, getting people to see people as people and then getting people to focus on not ignoring issues like this and you know yeah helping to <clears throat> no absolutely i totally agree i i'm 100 percent on on point with you with everything you just said i well one of the things that we do so much and um we try to do what we can with our social media the podcast our youtube our instagram and all the all the 
all the social media is to try to get awareness to people. And it's mainly not to show anybody, look at what we are doing, mm -hmm. but it's kind of like, look what you could do, mm -hmm. right? Because we want people to come and join us and be a part of serving our folks and being out there and helping our folks. Cause you know, we truly believe it takes a village, you know, to help, to help people. And you know, it's not up to one person, it's up to many hands and feet that can get out there and, and, and do this. Although, you know, I will say, you know, um, some people have a spiritual gift um, in doing outreach and, and they can do what you and I are doing. And then some people are blessed financially, which is also a, a good a good tool. So we've had, we've been very blessed to have people financially help support us to can help us continue to do what we're doing. So um, and, and that's where their and that's where their comfort level is. And so we so we understand that and we recognize that as well. So. Um, you know, I just really, you know, wanted to ask too, is like, uh, what's, do you have any, like, what's the craziest uh, story you might have or, or anything that's kind of like just strikes you as like, wow, I can't believe that or what, uh, anything that you've seen out on the streets while you're doing what you're doing? Um, I mean, I gotta say like, um, just, uh, I have so many stories. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Hear, like, I'm sure. Uh, um, and just tell stories and talk all day because I don't stop talking but uh, <laughs> uh, I think the uh, the most stressful situation has to be um, this uh, one day I, I believe I mentioned it in the news article it was mentioned uh, very briefly um, and uh, I this one day I was doing my <clears throat> outreach work I was down in St. James Park in downtown San Jose mm -hmm. uh, it's a um, pretty small park, but it has a large, uh, it, um, unhoused communities tend to congregate there, um, during the day, but at night, I think they get cleared out mostly now. But, um, like, uh, basically, there was this one, uh, woman, I believe she was, uh, uh, somebody told me that she was diabetic, she was having a seizure on the ground, uh, and, uh, I'm assuming just because of, like, low, low intake of food and water, I assume that it was, uh, due to low blood sugar rather than high blood sugar. So um, I had juice, so I gave her that, but then also I, I don't, I didn't think it would be enough. So I was running down to like a Ike sandwich shop mm -hmm. uh, downtown and they, they're wonderful. Um, but I'm pretty sure I scared the crap out of them when I came <laughs> down and uh, um, I kicked in the door kind of, and I was like, I need candy now. Cause I know they hand out like lollipops and stuff with their sandwiches. Um, so they just handed me like a basket and I just took it and then ran back. I handed her as much candy as, uh, she needed to, um, you know, get her blood sugar back up to, you know, um, a, uh, a good level. Mm -hmm. Um, and she was, she was okay. Um, we did, a. she was okay. I haven't seen her since that day, but, uh, she was okay after that cool. she came back from the seizure she was okay awesome um which is definitely the most stressful one of the most stressful things that has happened um of course i could talk about like people being very standoffish and aggressive but like um i like to bring up that story because like i don't want to um one of the main things is like i don't like to bring up the bad situation sure with, uh, of course you know, people being very aggressive who are unhoused because like i understand where they're coming from most of the time because it's like What's this dude in a costume coming around talking to me for? Like, uh, I, I totally understand that. And, like, I understand just the, the frustration and the anger that they have from, like, a personal level. Like, you know, um, if they want me to back off, I totally get that. So I will back away. Um, and I don't like bringing up the negatives because it's not – it's, like, the one who ruins it for all of the people. Mm-hmm. Um, and like that one person doesn't represent the entire unhoused population. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So I don't like to bring up those situations <clears throat> sure. just because they're not relevant. They're not important to me. They don't bother me. Sure. If that one person has, you know, that attitude, that's okay. Sure. Um, and I know that that's not the attitude that everybody holds. And I even believe that that attitude is valid because like it's, I understand it's very frustrating to, you know, be continuously stuck out on the street because like uh, we don't always have like the right systems put in place to help people sure it's very 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 frustrating and it gets to people and i totally understand that so that's kind of my sort of focus there is like i don't like to bring up the super you know 
any violent or stressful situations in that regard. Sure. So um, here at Street Life Ministries, we have a, a, a pretty awesome relationship with the, lo- the local police department in Redwood City and then the San Mateo County Sheriff's Department, mm-hmm. Menlo Park and Palo Alto and, and all the fire departments. We, we, we've established a really awesome working relationship with the, the law enforcement around here. Um, one, due to the fact that they've realized that we're here to to help and they are also here. They, they, the police departments are only, they can only function so much when it comes to doing a lot of the stuff that t- takes the outreach um, a little bit more further for some of our folks, especially the mental ill and a lot of the drug addiction. So we've been able to form a really good bond um, in that way. So they call us a lot and we go out and do outreach with them and, and uh, get folks off the street. I just wanted to see, has, has the San Jose police, have you, has it been, um, has it been a good working relationship? Have, they, have you uh, have you met any of the San Jose police and they and they are, are really cool like with what you're doing? Or, or how's how's that how's that been? Um, how's that relationship been? If if you've had any, mm-hmm. I'll say it's been uh, rocky to say the least. Okay, uh, it's much better now, um, but. I, I have my own personal, you know, uh, opinions and stuff like that. I won't get into that, but, um, you know, at first, uh, I honestly understand that, like, I look kind of very, a little bit scary with uh, all the body armor and stuff like that. Sure. If I take the cape off, because I used to use capes as, like, uh, emergency blankets as well. Um, but, uh, like, um, I have had uh, a couple instances where the police were not very happy with me. I've never been arrested or anything like that, because I'm not doing anything illegal, but, uh, like, um, I definitely have had people, um, you know, come and, like, talk to me before I got, like, the media coverage. And uh, it's been very interesting um, just because I personally handle the situation, uh, like, violent situations very much differently than uh, the police department in San Jose does. And, uh, like, um, I can't speak to their policies because I don't know all their policies and how they do things. but. Mm-hmm. In my experience, um, it's been very much a um, sort of an experience of like they take it very much um, in a way that's like a little bit more aggressive, um, mm-hmm. which isn't really my my forte. I don't like to, despite the what it may seem, I don't really like to take it as aggressive. I like to try to calm people down, um, sure. which is something that I'm working on I, I want um, I think like uh, they need to have a, a better like a mental health team which is like while I was thought it was really interesting that uh, they called you to come out and help out with that which I, I think could do very I think that'd be very helpful in San Jose to have something like that uh, rather than just the police on their own responding because you know they're going to revert to what they were trying to do and um that not all of the time is very helpful to um, uh, people on the street, and it's not very, it's not a great mutual relationship there. Like, a, there's only so much training you can give one person, and uh, like, it's very much more difficult to get, like, uh, say, like, um, mental health awareness and like training and stuff like that to help like calm people down. So that's something I'm currently working on is, uh, if not with the police department directly, uh, trying to get like uh, the local government in San Jose to more recognize that we need more resources in general, where whether it's mental health or um, like rehab services, I'm trying to get them to focus on that rather than, uh, you know, working directly with the police department, just because uh, I, I'm trying to focus on getting the mental health and the um, the rehab services there first. Yes. Um, yeah. No, that's really cool. And, and hopefully, you know, um, as you as you grow and as you do more stuff, maybe the city recognizes it more. And I hope that that mm-hmm. that relationship actually starts to form a good bond because I think what you're doing is is awesome, you know, out there. And I think that I think there's a lot to lot to be said and a lot to offer in a, in a mutual relationship. So hopefully that'll hopefully that will grow. Like I said, I've been doing this. I've personally been doing this for almost 14 years. We've been doing this for 20, and it's taken many years to, to, to form that bond. But now that I have it, um, it's, it's a great relationship. So I'm going to, I'm going to pray and hope that that, that bond starts to happen with you and also with your, your, your local government and your County and mental health. I, the mental health part of homeless,
homelessness is it's unbelievable. Like, you know, I'm 90 plus percent of all the folks that we work with out on the streets who have a drug addiction, um, it's a mental issue and they're, they're self-medicating, mm-hmm. which creates the mental issue to be, you know, a hundred times, if not more worse. Yeah. Right. And it's hard to keep up. It's especially, um, you said you've been doing this for two years and mm-hmm. over the years I've been doing this, especially in the last two years. And, and really I've noticed a huge change from post COVID to COVID. Um, uh, the, the mental issues on the street and the homeless outbreak is just quadrupled. It, mm-hmm. I like I Redwood City, I used to know every single person that lived on the street by first name. Mm-hmm. And I leave my office every day and I see about four or five new faces like constantly. Yeah. And so I know there's a, it's a huge, it, it's huge right now. And it's, it's almost like drinking from a fire hose, mm-hmm. you know, especially for the city and the county to try to keep up with it. Yeah. Um, so you said you've been doing this for two years yeah. and then, um, you know, I just wanted to also ask like two, like what are some ways, um, you know, I know you said you, you know, you talked about boots on the ground, mm-hmm. um, but what are some ways that some folks could come around you in San Jose? Um, they contact us or contact you directly. Um, but what are some ways that people, if they want to help you out, um, help you do what you're doing or help you financially or whatever what 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 systems do you have in place for people to contact you to, to for support um i mainly use uh for just like communication in general my main focus is instagram just because i i have a, a little bit of a social media presence there just because i want to be able to be very transparent with people on how i do things and why why i do what i do it's also very convenient to just be able to communicate with people there uh, rather than going through email or something like that, which I also have that set up. Uh, and then for like financially, uh, for donations, I use Venmo. Um, <laughs> it sounds very much like it's a product placement or something like that. Um, but uh, like, it's just very convenient for me. Uh, just so then, it's also separate from my bank account, so I can stay very accountable there. Because um, it's it's very what I do is very small scale. It's not um, a big organization and. Uh, the main ways uh, people can help, was specifically with people in San Jose, uh, I find that uh, physical donations help, um, but also like there's so many good organizations that are working, they're just underfunded or understaffed, um, in San Jose in particular, and uh, I, I keep advocating for, you know, volunteering for those, um, you know, starting your own, like anybody can do what I do, it's not really difficult, like, I put on this big fancy costume and I go out and do crazy stuff and <laughs> it's not even really that crazy. It's just walking around with a cart in a hot sweaty costume <laughs> in like the middle of like the day. Like it's nothing insane. Anybody can do what I do. Um, and that's been one of my main emphasis is uh, when, I, when I speak in public settings is like you don't need to just like if you can't donate, you can work, and even if you can donate, you should volunteer and work because, like, it's very much important that um, we have both a personal relationship with um, the unhoused community as well as um, the, you know, just the working relationship of you know getting people supplies and stuff like that, um, and you know, with donating, you only really get one side of that, if any. Um, so I, I, I mainly try to focus on getting people to volunteer and to, you know, do work themselves uh, rather than donating, but I also accept donations just because uh, being a broke college student, it can be a little bit tough. <laughs> yes. Anybody, anybody who's watching this or listening to this podcast uh, who has recently gone through college or is going through college knows the financial strain of college. And then you're doing this on top of it. Um, yeah, there's there's definitely some cost cost to it as well. And I know um, and I believe um, in, in our listeners and the people who already support Street Life Ministries that when they hear this podcast and they and they see your the video that we're going to post on our youtube that you're probably going to get a lot of people that are going to want to come and help support and maybe go out with you or mm-hmm. or um go to a downtown area and help serve mm-hmm. uh, we have a really amazing um following of people that like to get out and um put their boots to the ground so so i think you're going to be surprised with the people that are going to connect with you and want to help out i know that um myself personally vicky and i we've been talking on um, my admin about coming down on a weekend with our van and uh serving a hot meal 
um, to the folks down the park. Uh, so so we're, we're going to collaborate with you on that. So we'll maybe get some folks to come with us and maybe introduce them to you and to San Jose and maybe try to get some more um, food services going on down there, you know, and try to get something started with you guys. Yeah. So I think it'd be great. Um, I do have a question. So like, uh, I know obviously um, uh, you, you have a mom and a dad. Do you have any brothers and sisters? Uh, yeah, I have a, a brother and a sister. I'm not going to name names. No, of yeah, course I, not. I, I, I just want to remain anonymous. Yeah. So um, what So what do they think? Um, they're very supportive. Cool. Um, my brother, my brother and I are both pretty big comic book fans, so he's uh, he's very much interested in that, and uh, you know, he's even come out with me multiple times. Cool. Uh, my sister's a little bit younger, and uh, um, I don't think she's quite ready for that just yet. Um, but I'm totally open to her coming out and helping out. And uh, my brother has a very busy schedule because of uh, theater, but uh, I really appreciate the support that he's given sure. uh, when he can. Um, and I know that's not all the time. And I understand that, being a person with a very busy schedule now. Um, and yeah, they're very supportive, uh, as well as my parents. I don't think they were, my parents specifically, I don't think they were super psyched when they figured out I was doing it, because for a while I wasn't telling them, because sure. uh, you know, obviously they would try to stop me, uh, which I understand, but uh, you know, after they kind of realized how I do things, uh -huh. uh, they kind of came around and understood that. I think the media presence definitely helped as well. Mm -hmm. um, just because uh, um, I know it was pretty, you know, shocking to say the least to hear that I've been doing it. Because I've been doing it for, like, I want to say almost um, like, like half a year at that point when they figured it out. Um, and even then, I don't think they fully knew exactly how I was doing it um, until a little bit later. But uh, they're very supportive now. They help out um, a lot. I really appreciate their support mm -hmm. because I would not be able to do it without the support that I get from them. And then also, I have some friends in college as well who have been helping me out with this. Um, if not, like, physically, like, drive me since I don't have a car up there. But, uh, like... Just like support, like uh, like just having people to talk to, and uh, I want to acknowledge them as well, and I really appreciate that. Um, just because it, you know, being one person, it's pretty interesting, uh, to say the least. Uh, sure. With uh, you know, everything that's going on and all that. Yeah, well, that's really cool. I, I, I I've loved uh, this interview. I've loved this podcast. I do uh, want to ask. So, like, what would you say? I, I try to ask this of everybody I, I interview that's working or, or dealing with um, our homeless community. What would you say to those who are listening or watching on the YouTube channel um, that are like just nervous or apprehensive of, of going out? Because you know they sometimes you know some of our folks they see sometimes they see the more scarier side mm -hmm. of homelessness. They might watch something like uh, Seattle's Dying or or something like that where they see kind of a more of a like a scarier version of what homelessness looks like. So they feel like oh, mm -hmm. I, I, it's not for me. Um, and I do this for a living, and I, I I tell you I've I've only had a handful of times where I've gone out where I felt um, like wow that's that was pretty that was pretty intense, mm -hmm. but ninety seven percent of the time I go out I have never had any feeling. So what would you say to to the people that might be thinking the same thing? Um, well, I share your opinion of it like ninety seven percent of the time, probably more like ninety nine percent of the time. Yeah. Because, uh, a lot of the people in San Jose are super like relaxed and um, like if you're apprehensive about it um the few don't define the many um the few people who are not very you know keen on people um while they have their reasons they are not numerous um and like i understand their perspective i want to validate uh, people's perspective who are not very you know good with people um but also they are not numerous the ma like the majority of people out there uh, the vast, vast majority um, are very, very kind, caring, you know, very vulnerable individuals who will, you know, want to talk. With, like, if you actually open up and you tell them about yourself a little bit and actually start a dialogue, you'll learn a lot. You'll meet some really interesting people. Like this one dude named Bill. Um, uh, I'm only using his name because he's super laid back. And uh, um, I think uh, he's a super cool guy. He's like 65. He's like way more physically fit than I am at my age. Like, he'll run. He runs for fun. Uh, he's got a super cute dog. Um, 
but uh, you used to be like a uh, like a mechanic for the Hell's Angels biker gang, mm-hmm. um, and like uh, he's been all over the country. Like he's a super cool guy, and like I never would have met him and you know heard about his life experience and you know spoken with him if I didn't you know decide to do this. Like you'll meet really cool people um, who are very very interesting and you know just in a tough time. Like sure. the few don't define the many. The majority of people are wonderful, amazing individuals who just have nowhere to go and, you know, have the issues that come along with that. And it's hard to see, but it's, I don't think I would be able to sleep at night if uh, I didn't, you know, wasn't doing what I do. And even then, still, like, not, it's not great because I know that we need a lot more help and support, so... Yeah. I urge people, like, don't look at the few and generalize to the many. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I like I like that. That's I, I will say that I have engaged over the years in some of the most interesting conversations ever with some of our folks. I mean, MIT graduates, Stanford graduates, yeah. you know, folks that live here in the Bay Area that were, you know, part of the upper upper at one time. And due to... Um, uh, underlying bipolar or depression or schizophrenia that they didn't know that they had that mm-hmm. showed up later in their life and all of a sudden they swirled down mm-hmm. and um, and it's just it's 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 sad uh, for one to hear the story but what what for me um, is that I've realized like gosh it's so relatable like this this person could be my uncle or somebody in my family and you you know and you're sitting there and you're hearing their story you're like, oh my goodness, like that could happen to any one of us. And I think, you know, it, it kind of brings to line, people don't realize sometimes we're just one paycheck away from living in our car ourselves. Yeah. And I don't think people realize that. Mm-hmm. But what I have realized doing this is that by having those conversations and reaching out to people, um, you give them a sense of that they have a family and a yeah. friend. And so together, it's made it easier to help get people convinced to take some steps to get off the streets mm-hmm. and get back into some kind of a, I don't know what normal is, but a normal lifestyle you know, of some kind. So um, I just wanna say thank you so much for, for coming here and um, now we're gonna go do some outreach. Yeah. So I really appreciate what you're doing. Um, like I said, my team and I will be praying for you and uh, while you're on your summer break and hopefully when you come back, we'll uh, see some more videos of you on the streets. Mm-hmm. And so are you gonna, when you, now when you go to college, are you gonna do this um, at, at where you're at at college or are you gonna, just gonna do this in San Jose? Um, I. Wherever I end up, I'm going to take this along with me. Cool. It's an extra suitcase, but I don't care. Um, <laughs> I would imagine. So, um, yeah, so basically, I'll do this um, rain, snow, I don't really care. Rochester's cold. A lot of people need blankets. Sure. Um, and uh, I, I, can got only... a, I got a good red wagon that uh, has not been through, uh, has not taken enough damage yet to me be satisfied with it so with satisfied with my purchase so i'm gonna be working over there as well <laughs> i um, can only imagine what what uh the the airline would would think when they see your suitcase go through the x-ray and they see oh, all yeah, the and they see the it, batman that, stuff that, that gets checked, that gets checked. <laughs> i'm yeah, sure it does so that's check luggage um, <laughs> but uh yeah like um Rochester weather is not going to stop me because I know that people need help, good people need help, and, you know, it's, um, I'm kind of excited. Cool. Um, it'll be tough, but honestly, I'll do work here, I'll do work over there, I'll do work, I don't really care where, um, as long as, like, people need help, I'll, I'll be around, because, like, I got time on my hands, like, I can do something, and, you know, People cool. Are really cool. <laughs> awesome. So, is there any final words or thoughts or anything that you'd like to leave with anybody that's listening? Um, one, I'd like to say thank you to all the people who have been very supportive with me, and thank you for uh, allowing me to come on um, and uh, communicating. Uh, I, I want to say that, like, I know times are very, very, very tough right now, and a lot of people are struggling with their own problems as well as you know seeing everybody else struggling. It's uh, very much the time of mutual struggle. Um, and uh, I know we've dropped uh, a lot of the formalities that we used to have, and like we're a lot more, you know, we 
have seen and been desensitized to so much, but don't let yourself become too desensitized to, um, you know, people because it doesn't matter, like, uh, you know, we just need to recognize people as people. And, you know, even if you physically in like a financial way cannot help, uh, which I totally understand, like, or um, you're in a place where like physically you're unable to help and I totally get that too. Um, we just need to see people as people and, you know, recognize that like, we can help and like people, you know, have reasons why they're why they end up out there. They're not just there because they're bad or they made bad life choices. Like sometimes that's the case, but like sometimes stuff happens. Life happens, and I think we all realize that this like these past two years, life has happened, and uh, we need to start recognizing that. You know, person on the street is just as much a human being as you know, I am or you are or anything like that. So. Just see people for who they are rather than what they look like or, you know, where their position is at the moment. Um, and that's pretty much all I have to say on that. So, that's again, cool. thank you. Thank you, Batman. We really appreciate you what you're doing in San Jose. And really, uh, like I said, we'll be praying for you and your success um, in Rochester um, while you're in school and what you're doing. And just pray that whatever calling that you have on your life, that you continue to follow that to the fullest of your uh, ability. And just pray that uh, you continue to have a lot of support around you and people in San Jose are touched and blessed by what you're doing. So thank you so much for, for your time. All right? Yeah.